No, I'm going to end. Uh, right, good. We have about five minutes left. We're in time. Tell me about stuff that we've been doing uh, for the last um, uh, few years. Uh, my personal view is that this is, um, I think this is the most significant stuff that, that, that we've managed to, uh, to work on. But it's really based on, you know, 20 years of work before it, trying to work out what's going on with the PTRE and the brain disease, and also from observation in the, uh, in the animal, uh, sort of observations um, in, in, uh, of animals and humans also in the field. Now, um, Sir James Black, who, as you know, was a Nobel Prize winner in medicine, who uh, uh, was a wonderful man, uh, a mentor to many people, including myself. Uh, he uh, d developed uh, beta blockers and also um, H2 antagonists, you'll be familiar with that. He um, said the best way to, uh, to, to, to develop a new drug is to start with the old drug. Okay? And that was one of his general principles. And this actually, not everyone would agree with that, but in this case, that's what we did. So what happened? Minocipril, okay, this was the, the thinking. There are all these other drugs that are being used, uh, for, mainly for, all for Gambiense. And obviously we hope that they're going to, um, to work, but they may not work. And Minocipril, uh, I understand from my uh, colleagues, is likely to be used certainly for Rodiziense for really quite some to come. There are no new drugs on stream. Um, won't be for three to five years any, for anything. Uh, certainly not for the Rhodesiense. Now, it's true that uh, only about 5%, so maybe, I don't know, 1,000 cases or so involved. But, you know, it's a horrible disease. Um, it's very, very severe. And mainly in Uganda. Uganda is where these cases are. And that's where I do my studies at the moment. And also, as I mentioned, patients coming from Europe. So as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, these patients need, as, you know, need uh, uh, as, as much attention as the others. So, since it's got to be used, how about saying, well, we'll make it safer? Um, and so this is the, the molecule, and then so... The problem is it's low water solubility. As a result, it's given in uh, um, propylene glycol, which is highly toxic, can only be given intravenously. This is extremely painful. Patients need to be held down. It is like having chili peppers into your, uh, injected into your heart. So the economist A.A. A. Gill said in an article in the Sunday Times. Um, it's uh, given a multiple injection uh, sites. It's, uh, there is now this 10-day regime, extremely painful. You get phlebitis, thrombophlebitis, cellulitis, tissue necrosis. So this is not good. And of course, that's quite apart from the complications that I've already told you about, which is the post-reactive uh, encephalopathy. So um, uh, S -S 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 Stefan Gibel. Uh, um, in pharmacology in the University of Lorraine, um, uh, 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 was very interested in these, and he uh, lo looked at these cyclodextrins. These are naturally occurring oligosaccharides, non-toxic, used as food additives, and also it's widely used uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. There's a drug called paroxicam, for example, that's used. And basically, th the interest is that the internally uh, can accommodate gas molecules, it's hydrophobic, externally, it's hydrophilic, so it's water soluble. So this increases the water solubility, the bioavailability of the drug. So uh, the cyclodextrin was um, uh, was uh, combined as a complex with melasoprol, uh, two different types, and uh, 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 we've been for this took about three to four years um, to do about three years, um, and in this collaboration, uh, and we uh, have been testing them, and I'll show you the results. Now, there are four ways of assessing, uh, um, and this is obviously d done in my lab with uh, uh, two key people, being Dr. Gene Rogers, I mentioned later, who is the key scientist in the lab, and, Dr., uh, and uh, Barbara Bradley, who is a fantastic animal technician, but they've been doing this for many years. So basically, you know whether you're treated because uh, it's actually 60 days now. So what happens is uh, after animals infected, the brain is obtained, and you passage it, and when you no longer get a uh, 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 transfer of disease, they're cured. Secondly, the triposome load using TAPMAN PCR. Thirdly, the new pathology to see whether or not that's improved. And fourthly, blood-brain barrier integrity, we can um, um, 
we can visualize uh, leakage from the blood brain barrier using small bore MRI. And they're the four means of looking at it. So there's uh, uh, Frank, that's a wonderful man um, who, who died recently, and there's Barbara, um, who's still in the lab. This, as I said, this has been developed. Acute disease, early CNS disease, late CNS disease, and this post reaction. You can see it's a weakened model, all of, uh, all of this. So basically, the drugs are delivered. First of all, establish the minimum curative dose, and, and that was done. And uh, uh, what you see there is what we're interested in. And basically, when you convert those doses to the human dose, what is remarkable is if you get, uh, I'll just do that, um, if you get the, min the, minimum, the, the minimum dose and the maximum used dose in between that, it's very, very, very similar to the total dose of um, of uh, melastoprol that's given intravenously that, that is most, that's is going to be very convenient. So it's interesting that it's very similar. And this shows melastoprol is effective uh, uh, as well. Um, and the, basically the complex is a highly effective following or demonstration, uh, or, or administration. The tryptophan mode goes down, as you can see, very quickly um, within uh, about one day. And the parasites are cleared by day, by day four, by day five. Um, Rapid clearance, the neuropathology uh, goes, is also um, uh, cleared uh, 15 days after the completion, uh, it's great. Again, we used the gradient scale, uh, which I've mentioned to you before, and you can see that there's this significant reduction, uh, and uh, so it reduces the inflammation. And the other thing is the integrity. Now, uh, the, neuradio, sorry, the neurologists and others will be familiar with this, but contrast agents don't readily cross the intact blood-brain barrier. And exfiltration of contrast agent in the brain parenchyma indicates impairment, leakiness of the blood brain barrier. And you're familiar from patients, you know, uh, that when we have a lesion, whatever, what happens is uh, there's an increase in MRI density. And our clinical physicist in the MRI unit, the small bore 70 MRI unit, what they can do is the animals, you know, are put into this in, into machine, very powerful machine, and they can uh, quantitate. Uh, um, the uh, amount of broadband barrier uh, leakage. And they use this formula, and basically what they show, they have a false color image, and they can actually show that as soon as it's breached, in fact, you shouldn't see, you, you should not see that, that it's breached, and then it recovers, and in fact, it shows that uh, very, very soon this signal change is, is cured. So rapid restoration of the blood brain barrier function. So these complexes are effective when delivered, when delivered orally, Rapidly clear triplosomes from the brain, reduce the CNS inflammatory response, they restore blood brain barrier integrity, and there are no overt signs of toxicity. For example, the, you know, the critical thing is to make sure they don't lose weight, there's no weight, uh, weight loss. So, an oral formulation of melasoprol. So, if this works, obviate the need for hospitalization, reduce treatment costs, and also reduce the pain of administration, increase patient, uh, patient compliance. Okay, this is the controversial bit. Okay, um, um, we uh, are very interested in uh, applying this to the field. Uh, the potential future directions uh, for complex monosporosophil. I recently wrote, this paper was published in PLOS NTD in September 2011, uh, 2011 and I recently published um, an, article, an opinion article in Trends in Parasitology. Uh, which uh, many people agree with, one person has claimed not agree with. Um, and uh, so this debate's going to go on. Um, uh, but we think there's a good case. Uh, and this is what you'd have to do. You'd have to, uh, you know, this is a drug that you give, give to patients, so you have to go through the right pathways. Established with, as an, with orphan drug designation. Uh, because once that's been done with the European Medicine Agency, in our case, or could be the FDA, then in fact it would be used in man, and then um, uh, people in, in Uganda, I think, would, would, would look at that very favorably. You have to obtain the funding for a small phase two study. You're talking about uh, $1.8 million, that kind of thing, uh, which is not very much for a small study. Formulate trial protocol, well, that's being done at the moment. Uh, I've already met with my colleagues in Uganda, I'm seeing them again soon, and they are very excited by this possibility. Initial study of 20 oral complex melosporol versus 20 intravenous. The 10-day bridge melosporol regime has now been used for both types of group. 
if promising, then you negotiate with potential partners for phase three study, and eventually you would seek market authorization. So that would be the ideal. Now, I don't know whether or not this is going to be possible, but uh, we're certainly going to see if it's possible. And I think that uh, uh, it needs to be uh, taken forward, especially for these patients with rhodesianza. Well, indeed, only for them in, in the first instance, because there is no alternative. And however much one hates arsenic, the reality is that for you know five, ten years, I'm sure this will continue to be the, uh, the drug. Future prospects. Last slide. Better control of human population surveillance with more reliable case detection. I mean, we've already seen what happens. This disease has shown its ability to come back with a vengeance, even when people thought that it had been cured. So this, you know, can go up and down. Improved diagnostic test. Cheap, reliable, easy to perform, sensitive and specific. Has to go hand in hand with new drug development. Uh, so it's, it's fine to get advanced, you know, proteomics or whatever, or advanced molecular biology to get a good technique. It has to be applicable in the field. Uh, more accurate staging of CNS disease, absolutely critical. We've seen why, because of the fact that people don't agree with the criteria necessarily, and also the, the consequences of getting it wrong in other way. More effective drug treatment obviously is absolutely crucial. Uh, better use of existing drugs that we've seen, uh, maybe increasing the blood brain barrier penetration or therapy development. And certainly over the last decade, there's, in the last five years, there's been a tremendous interest because of, as I say, WHO, working with Drugs for Neglected Disease Initiative, and then working with, um, with the pharmaceutical uh, companies, working with universities. There's been a tremendous uh, amount of effort recently trying to get more effective drug treatment. So I think the prospects are much, much more optimistic now than they were before. Don't forget that Ceti fly trap I showed you. A significant reduction of man-fly contact will be critical. ground based strategies, fly traps. And it can be done. For example, um, there have been things like the, um, the uh, sterile insect technique in which uh, you make uh, the male sterile and then flood, flood the market, so to speak, to get um, uh, uh, to, to eradicate tri tri uh, um, the um, the, uh, the flies in that way, that's been used in Zanzibar with good effect. Also in in um, Botswana, they've used uh, cereal, uh, um, uh, the uh, another technique uh, which is I involving uh, dropping dropping uh, uh, insecticides from. Uh, from airplanes. And so all these various methods have been used. So that's absolutely critical. And you've seen the fly traps. So that has to, you must bear in mind that that is occurring at the same time. Also increasing understanding of the pathogenesis of a sleeping sickness, which I think is critical. The reason why it's critical is not only for the obvious reasons that you know you want to know what's going on, but also you can identify drug targets. Because if in fact you can show that something inhibits, therefore you're identifying a target. Uh, and also, don't forget that the more information we have about knowledge of how these things get across the blood-brain barrier, then you get generic information about um, about the host um, pathogen interaction at the blood-brain barrier for a whole variety of different diseases, not just sleeping sickness. I want to th thank my various colleagues. As I say, there quite a few. I've been in, doing this since 1988, so quite a few colleagues. Um, I won't go through them all, but in Glasgow University, past and present members. Uh, the critical people right now, underline Jean Rogers, I mentioned, is uh, 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 a, a, a scientist who uh, runs the model and with whom I've worked uh, for many, many years, a critical part of this, uh, of this uh, group. Uh, Max Murray was my mentor, and uh, he and I started this group uh, uh, over 20 years ago. Barbara Bradley, as I mentioned, is the um, animal, health te uh, the, the animal technician. Um, who is superb. And there are the, these various other people um, um, who, and if, where there's a star, there are people that are working with us right now. Because he's very distinguished names. Chris Hunter is now a very eminent uh, a chair of pathology at, uh, at Penn. Amy Jones is the uh, PhD student who's now in Australia who worked with us, worked with the great work on the complex monospore. George Gettenby is our mathematical modeler who does our statistics. We, correlate, uh, we, we work with these other people. In, uh, in Europe and also in Scotland and also uh, in Uganda. Uh, and um, University of Lorraine, Stefan Gibbo is, is, being, is, is very, very much involved with us right now with the complex monospore. So, uh, so he, he and I are working very hard at the moment uh, regarding trial regulation. 
And I mentioned John Hopkins. Uh, I'm right now on sabbatical for three months, as you may know, uh, working in Dennis Grad Lab. And without the help of the Wellcome Trust um, and the Medical Research Council, none of this would have been possible. And more recently, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are, are, are funding some of our, our blood-brain barrier and neuroimaging work. So thank you very much.